In today's gospel, scribes, they have come all the way from Jerusalem to see Jesus. And no doubt, they wanted to investigate the wonders that have been attributed to him. And their conclusion is astonishing. Despite his attention to prayer and compassion, they say, they say that Jesus can cure illness and expel demons because he is in league with the devil. An accusation maybe we still hear nowadays. However, Jesus is not dismayed. He responds to the accusation with an analogy that analogy that challenges people today, but perhaps was not lost on those surrounding him during his time. He compares Satan's control over the world to a strong man's possession of a house. Then Jesus compares himself to an even stronger man who has come to come into the state, Satan's house and tidy him up. As a result, the household is liberated from Satan's perverse rule. Jesus overturns the scribe's accusation, saying that if he does what he does in the name of the devil, the devil is fighting itself. And for that is what he came to do in this world, resist the devil inhabiting our human homestead. Aikido is a kind of martial art, like a karate. It is a unique way of self-defense because it uses the assailant's aggression against himself. And the principle is reflected in how Christ defended himself against the scribes' accusation against him. The scribes accuse Jesus of driving out demons by their power. And Jesus immediately saw the flaw in the logic and said, and how can Satan drive out Satan? He explains his intention in a fascinating way. No one can take his way into a strong man's house and steal his property unless he has first tied up the man. Only then can he take his house. Jesus comes as a divine thief you know, into our human night to break through the walls of the existing order that keeps us terrorized and imprisoned, binding that strong man and simultaneously unbinding us. Jesus comes to bind the strong man who threatens humanity. He comes to liberate us. I don't know if you are familiar with the divide and rule tactics. This was the military tactics used by the Roman emperors before Christ, before Christ was born, in conquering the other empires throughout Europe. The British used this same tactic in India against the kingdoms when they colonized India. You know, they usually ask, you know, they usually said, you know, uh, provoke two kingdoms to fight each other. And when they are weakened, they fight, you know, British, they would take over. They used, you know, a conflict within one nation and kingdom or two and made two divided groups to fight each other until the empire weakened and reached its downfall. But a more practical message confronts us today. A house divided against itself cannot stand. House could mean a family an organization, a community, a group, a tribe, a party, a class, and many more. That all may be one was the prayer of Jesus, that they all be one. As long as we Christians remain divided, we still have a long way to go in realizing God's kingdom. From the 18th of January to 25th, we are invited to pray for unity among Christians, especially between all denominations. One mark of a faithful Christian is their passion for unity. Maybe a question we can ask today is, 
do I have this passion, passion for unity? 